okay, so developing a habit of daily Bible reading. So I want to share with you just my brief testimony of, of how I was able to develop a daily reading uh, habit. Um, I shared in my testimony that I got this idea um, to read through the Bible in 2007. And I know that idea had to come from God. So, um, I mean, I didn't think seriously about that. I just had that idea, and I just wanted to pursue it. It's just an idea that whose time has come. Because I had not, I had never read through the whole Bible, um, much of the Old Testament. I've never laid eyes on, so I got that idea. So then I started sharing with a few friends, and uh, one of those was my brother. My older brother, he's f four years older than me, lives in uh, Pennsylvania. And I called him and I said, "Hey, I got this idea to read through the Bible in 2007." And he said to me, "Why don't I join you?" And that changed everything. So that year, I started out with this plan, and we went to um, Gideon's.org. You can find a plan, a reading plan on Gideon's.org that will take you through the Old and the New Testament uh, side by side. Every day you read a little bit of the Old, you read a little bit of the New. And it starts in Genesis and Matthew, and it ends in Malachi and Revelation. So that's the plan we started, and I was resolute. I wanted to finish it. I wanted to get through it. And, um, and I, I, so I took that idea seriously. I, I, I took that. That was the voice of God in my head saying, Larry, I want, you to, I want you to do this. So it became the work that God gave me to do. And then, and then getting Jeff involved, getting my friend Joe Hill involved, um, which I called later, and he joined us um, that year. That was, that was huge. And if, if, if Jeff hadn't joined me, I don't, know, I don't know where I'd be. I think because, you know, I think he was an integral part to my spiritual health. So that's how God uses us. He, he puts us together. So I I want you to, if, if this is something you're going to take on seriously, to read through the Word or read the Word, and I don't care how much you read every day. I really don't. It used to be, I always used to tell people, read through the Bible. Well, it's just, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a lot of work. So I'm not saying, I mean, if you want to do it, great. And I, I applaud you and I'll help you as much as I can. Um, but at the same time, you're going to be like, wait, that's way too much reading for me. That's fine. And find a find a, a way to, to read half a chapter maybe a day. Read through the New Testament through the the uh, 2013 the next year, and and stick to it. So it doesn't matter how much each day, but whatever plan you you, you decide on, stick to the plan. So anyway, that year I, I you know we decided to read through the Bible, and um, I tell you I was I was really lazy. I had a um, a living Bible. That was Kenneth Taylor's version, and that's that's a pure paraphrase, right? Living Bible, um, and I, I learned later that Kenneth Taylor, um, and I think it was in the fifties. I'm not sure what decade he he found that um, whatever Bible versions in the day, maybe the RSV, NASB, and King James versions, um, they were hard for his grandchildren to understand. He would try to read the Bible to his grandkids. That's the idea that I, I have. This, the story goes, and um, he found it very difficult to read the Bible to his grandkids. So what he did was he paraphrased um, one of the versions and put it in his own words. The you know the Living Bible, and imagine that. I mean that's that's a huge undertaking. So at first it was the a New Testament, then eventually they they got the Old Testament. The Living Bible. And now I know the Living Bible gets a ton of uh, criticism today. And, and yeah, some of the verses just don't, you know, I don't know, make sense. Or they're really poor uh, translations from the original languages. But I'm telling you, um, you're, there's still so much value in the Living Bible. Because it's, it's clear. It's easy to understand. And I'm not telling you that's the most accurate. I'm not, not going to say that that's the one you should read. But uh, for me... I had the Living Bible that my mom bought for me a long time ago. I was young. I was, might have been 11 years old when she gave me this Bible. And that was by my nightstand at, at, in, by my bed. And then um, I had a huge New American Standard Bible that um, I, I read in, a, a kit, in the breakfast nook that was downstairs. So usually in the morning I start with the Old Testament, reading um, the NASB, and then in my truck I had a Ford Ranger. And I had the um, um, NIV, a story of God. It was called NIV. I got it at some evangelical meeting. And uh, it was a paperback. And it was in my truck. 
So I, I was lazy. I didn't want to just always carry a Bible around. So I put the, the Living Bible by my nightstand. I had the NASB in the kitchen nook. And then I had the Truck Bible, the NIV, which is in tatters. It's actually duct tape up now. It's still, it's still usable. But um, anyway, that I read from each of those versions every day. And at least, well, some days I'd skip because I didn't have the daily habit yet. So I, you know, it was sporadic. But, you know, I kind of kept up with the schedule. And um, so that's part of our, uh, that, that's my testimony. I was a changed person as a, in, um, as a result of it. I, I, and uh, my prayers started changing and I started to, um, you know, praying differently. And my prayers were more like, um, God, I really want to get to know you more. So it became, my prayers became personal. And I showed more of an intimacy in my prayer life. Um, God, I want to know you more. God, please reveal yourself to me. And I'm telling you, those prayers get his attention. Because it's sincere. It's from your heart. I really want to know God. He tells me to love him. And for so many years, I didn't even know how to love God. And that's exactly what we're talking about here. Because the more you know him, and the more you love them, and the more you, you start this dialogue. So it's not just about reading. Um, we're going to talk about prayer. So so that's it. That's my testimony for daily reading. And I've been reading ever since. It wasn't until 2008 that I started really seriously every day, like not going without a day. So since somewhere mid-2008, mid that's where I can go back and say, I have not gone a day since mid-2008 where I've skipped a day of, of reading something. And maybe sometimes it's just, it might be just a paragraph where I've had such a busy day, things going on. But, you know, even if it's 2 a.m. in the morning and I'm just now going to bed, um, I will attempt to read. And it's because I really want to now. It's because I really thoroughly enjoy getting in the Word. So that is my testimony because at first it was obligation. At first I read it because I knew I needed to read it. And I, I, I had that idea and I did it. So I used to use that sense of obligation as an excuse not to read. I used to say, well, since I don't really desire it, you know, I'm reading out of obligation, then I shouldn't read it at all. Well, that's not, that's not good at all. No, you need to read it. I mean, he wants you to read it. He wants you to get to know him. And the only way you can really love God is to just keep, you know, reading his word and knowing more about him. And some days are, are easier than others. Some days you might not get anything out of your reading. You know, if you read something like Leviticus, it's it's kind of hard to get something out of your reading. But you get a little here, a little there, and eventually it takes root. And eventually you understand it more. Eventually you get more out of it. Eventually you value it more. So, let's get started with these uh, daily tips. Developing a habit of daily reading. If you have not been reading or putting God second, or if you've been putting God second in your life. So this is where you, you search your heart. You say, have I been putting God in the back burner? Have I not been reading? Have I just not taken God seriously? Well, um, if that's the case, then I, I recommend that you repent. I think you should. And repenting, you know, although you might have repented before to give a heart for God, I, I'm a believer that if there's anything not right in my life, if there's anything I know I've been doing wrong, and I get repentant over it. I get this this spirit, you know, and, and you know this this idea in my heart that I need to change, or that I've been doing this wrong. I go to God and I say I repent. So it's just that simple, and it's good to do because you, you, your heart will say soft if you if you live a life that you consider whether you're uh, living a life that's pleasing to God or not. Then you're going to look at things differently. And it's more of a relational approach to the daily Christian life rather than a legalistic approach. Well, I haven't done that. I've done that. No. Think about it. Is, is, is this really pleasing to God? You know, when a friend calls you out of the blue and um, he's either going to call to waste your time or he's going to call because there's something special about you and he really wants your opinion or he just wants you to listen, he or she, right? So... Sometimes someone calls and uh, it could be a waste of time and you might want to just, you know, kind of say, no, nope, I don't have time to talk now. Um, but sometimes that friend is someone you definitely need to talk to. So regardless of what you're doing, um, immediately, um, perhaps that's exactly what God wants you to do, is talk to your friend that calls you out, out of the blue. And um, so that's in that way, you please God. 
and it's a phone call you didn't plan. It's a phone call that, um, in, in some ways, it, it distracts you from your day because you're working. But maybe God appointed that to happen, that you can actually take the time to listen to your friend because people don't listen enough. And maybe you're the person that God put in, in their life to, to listen to. So in that way, you can become Christ in the flesh. And I think about the, the woman that was um, anemic. She was losing blood, like she had some kind of blood disease. And um, Jesus was on his way to heal um, the synagogue leader's daughter. And Talitha, I think is her name. I can't remember. I, I don't know the scripture, but I, I know the story. I, I memorized the story more than the, the text itself. So all, all I'm saying is Jesus is on his way to heal a, a, small, a young girl that's dying. She's on her deathbed. It's a sense of urgency, right? Jesus is in this crowd because he's like the most popular dude. And this woman touches Jesus. And remember, power uh, goes from his body. So he senses, he knows something's different. Remember, he turns around and says, who touched me? So he's distracted, right? I mean, he's on his way to heal the young girl. And we'll talk about this maybe on another call. But all I'm trying to say is that was a divine appointment. That's something that, you know, the father wanted Jesus to heal the, 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 the woman with a blood sickness. And she, he says, your faith has set you free. And there's a lesson for all of us right there. And he was on his way to heal this, this, this young girl. And then, and then he, 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 he uh, goes back to doing what he was doing. He goes back to, on his way to heal the girl. And they told him, teacher, you're too late. Teacher, she's dead. She's beyond hope. And he says, I think he pretty much says, don't, don't be afraid. I, I got you covered. Jesus says, I got you covered. So let me tell you, distractions, you, you have to discern. And that's where the Holy Spirit really has to work in your life. You have to learn how to hear the Holy Spirit and say, yes, Larry, I want you to hear this person on the phone. I want you to take the time to listen to them. Or, or you'll say, this is a waste of time. I should have nothing to do with this person. Because the devil, I'm telling you, the devil wants to distract you. The devil can distract you with work. He can distract you with certain uh, relationships that are not fruitful. He can distract you by the, the sitcoms. He can distract you by the, the other reading materials. If I read all of this, this is the good stuff. This is about George Miller. If I read all of this and no Bible, this becomes a distraction. So all I'm trying to say is, you learn how to live a life that's pleasing to God. You work in that way to obey Him. And sometimes that means uh, allowing uh, a phone call to, uh, to distract you and listen to the other end of the line, the, the person who wants to talk to you, whether it's listening or whatever. Okay, so the next step. Okay, so let's pray. Let's pray for those... Those of you that um, admit and you confess that you have not uh, been putting God first in your life. If you, if you think about this and think, I have not been, now my camera's screwing up again. I apologize for my camera. It wants to follow my face, but sometimes. Anyway, um, if you have not been putting God in your first, let's, let's uh, pray a prayer right now. Dear Heavenly Father, um, I have not been living a life that's pleasing to you. As a matter of fact, Lord, I've been running from you. I've been allowing every little thing to get in my way. Um, I, I, I want to watch the news all the time. I want to follow politics. I want to follow sports. I want to follow um, uh, friends. And I want to do everything uh, but listen to you. I want to do everything but read your word. I want to I wanna live my life. Um, I've been living a careless, haphazard life, Lord because of not taking you seriously, because I haven't been doing the things that you would have me do. Because I know, Lord, I know that you want me to follow you closely. I know, Lord, that you want me to trust in you. You want me to love you above everything else. And, and only by your love, Lord, can I love others. So, Lord, I've been missing the boat. I've been um, on the wrong track. And, Lord, I want to get on the right track. And, Lord, I want... Uh, I want to know you more. 
I want to seek you with my whole heart. I want to uh, serve you in a way that's pleasing in your sight, that I might be a, a faithful and loyal and trustworthy servant. So, Lord, you can use me for greater things. You can use me to love others. You can use me to be Christ in the flesh to those in my life. And, Lord, I, that's what I want. That's my decision, Lord. Help me as I determine what plan to follow. Help me to follow that plan. Help me to find someone to read along with me. Help me to find someone to kind of join with me on a regular basis that we might talk to you, talk about you, and... Um, and live a life of fellowship so that my mind might be renewed. And I praise you, Lord. I thank you for all that you're going to do in my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So uh, there's a very simple, basic prayer um, that God will take, uh, God will listen to, I guarantee you. Um, so the next step is determine in your mind and pray for assistance with your decision. This might be the hardest thing to do for you. It, it, it might be. It might be very difficult to start this plan and to stick to it. So um, pray for God's assistance because he wants you to get him involved. He doesn't want you to be a lone, lone ranger Christian when it's just, you know, all by himself um, living a life um, in isolation. He wants us to involve ourselves with him and with, with friends. So we can take this information to your friends and say, look, this is a plan I want to do and I want to include you in this. I, wanna, I want um, someone else to read along with me that I can share with. And you can do it a husband and wife, you can do it as a brother and sister, you can do it, you know, two brothers, two sisters, regardless. Um, the Lord will give you that one person that, um, that will be beneficial to you and that will help you in your growth. Because this is, this is something that God doesn't want you to do on your own. Because you're just going to um, be much more fruitful if you involve others. Um, so find a reading partner. Uh, pray for God's assistance and, and help in doing this. Find a reading partner or a Bible reading buddy. Um, and at the end of the call, I'm going to invite um, everyone to follow along the plan I'm, I'm going to read for 2013. Um, but I'm going to talk about that later, so you might want to... Uh, Go to the end where I'm going to talk about it if you're if you're doing this. So anyway, um, it's an invitation that I'm going to put out there to, to um, join me uh, as I read through the Old Testament next year. It's a very simple plan. Um, so anyway, choose a plan to follow and take it before God. So um, there's a number of reading plans found on thebibleteam.com. If you have an Android or some, those are a great way to read the Word these days is on your phone. Um, if you have a smartphone or a Kindle, um, there's a there's a software called UVersion. I, I love it, and you can read from any given translation in the, in the world. I think on that on that software, and they have so many Bible reading um, plans. So um, there's a, so many plans to listen. I don't even want to start. You can read through the whole Bible. Whole Testament, whole New Testament, and there's so many other plans to read. Um, so choose a plan. Find a friend to read with you, and then together choose a plan. Maybe a half chapter a day, maybe a chapter a day. Make it simple. Um, you don't need to add more confusion. And I'm telling you, Jesus doesn't want to add a burden, right? This isn't Jesus saying, "Hey, I'm going to give you a lot of work." Um, I'm telling you, you trust Him long enough, and you understand that His burden is light. It's absolutely light. He's not a harsh taskmaster. The world is the harsh taskmaster, friends. God it gives you, he, he lightens your burden. And if you apply all this we're talking about today and seriously seek him, um, he will enable you. He will help you to follow through with this plan. And it will become a joy for you. Um, prepare for success. Um, consider how it will work in your schedule. So think about um, ways that you can incorporate this in your schedule and don't wait until if you know you get tired around 11 o'clock don't wait for 11 o'clock to start reading your Bible don't because you just fall asleep God wants our very best he not only wants our first fruits with with money and our services I think but he wants our first fruits in spending time with him so you want to find a time that you're mentally alert and you're able to give him your full attention so I highly recommend that you find a time that you're alert, that you 
will get value out of reading your Bible. Um, there's nothing wrong with falling asleep. Don't feel guilty because you fell asleep. But make a, a greater effort to read when you're alert. On, uh, the next one is plan to discuss the reading with regularity. So if you have a, a friend to read along with you, plan to you know talk with them uh, maybe once a week, maybe every other week, um, however you work it out. But um, um, you know, uh, so we'll talk about it a little bit later. Um, okay, so here's my reading tips: make Bible reading a high priority daily. This is in line with putting God first. So if you get through a day and you read your Bible, you know, at least you got the most important thing done. This might mean getting up earlier or setting time aside prior to bedtime. Some people are alert when they get up in the morning, or some people are alert before they go to bed. Maybe they can't sleep anyway, so you might as well read the, the word. Um, reading some in the morning and some in the night is ideal. So Joshua 1, 8, meditating day and night. Um, I, I like to do that. So that's my preference. Read in the morning, read in the afternoon. Uh, number two, have a Bible with you at all times. So there, there again, if you have a phone that you can read the Bible or a Kindle or something like that, um, if it's with you all the time, some days it might be difficult to find reading time. Um, so we really need to take advantage of the idle time. If you're waiting on a train, if you're waiting in a doctor's office, if you're if you're just you know idle time, you're waiting to leave um, the house. If you're waiting on your spouse, um, just just find those few idle minutes and, and read. And you might think that, well, I only have two minutes, why bother reading? Well, those two minutes can turn into 10, 12, 15 sometimes. You, you never know. What the, you know how it is. I should have done this all along. Well, if you just start reading the Bible, you never know how, how long you have, and so it'll be worthwhile. <sighs> okay, and that, that'll help you keep on schedule. It's just a practical idea. And then number three, read at least a chapter every day. If you're reading a half chapter, then at least read a half chapter every day. A half chapter usually not, is not that hard to read. There's some very long chapters in the Bible, of course. But if you just decide to read at least a chapter a day, at least a half chapter, um, at least it's something. It, it, you know, So don't worry about, well, I didn't read the whole day. Well, at least it was something. It's that much you won't have to read the next day. So I'm just talking about reading, doing something daily so that you don't lose momentum. That's the worst thing you can do is lose momentum. Um, even if you go to bed very tired without having read anything, try to at least to read a chapter prior to lights out. It may be something encouraging to help you sleep after all, right? I mean, if you have any kind of worries or concerns, sometimes, you know, you come to the Bible and uh, you read it and say, wow, I, I, I feel differently about things because it looks like God has everything in control, right? We, we all need that reminder of what God's doing, which is why this is so important. This helps us be, uh, build faith. Exodus 16 speaks to this, and the next morning the area uh, around the camp was wet with dew. When the dew evaporated, a flaky substance as fine as frost blanketed the ground. The Israelites were puzzled when they saw it. What is it? They asked each other. They had no idea what it was. And Moses told them, it is the Lord, it is, I'm sorry, it is the food the Lord has given you to eat. These are the Lord's instructions. Each household should gather as much as it needs. Pick up two quarts for each person in your tent. So the people of Israel did as they were told. Uh, some gathered a lot, some only a little. But when they measured it out, everyone had just enough. Uh, those who gathered a lot had nothing left over, and those who gathered only a little had enough. Each family had just what it needed. Okay, so here's... Here's what I'm saying. It doesn't matter uh, the quantity that you that you read. You know, you could read one verse for that matter, and uh, meditate on that. And that one verse might be enough food. But um, uh, I think we can learn from uh, the Israelites. And whether you read three chapters or one chapter, it doesn't matter. Um, that's your portion. So when you decide on any kind of plan, just decide that that's my portion for that day. And, 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 and daily Bible reading is important because if you read, if you're, if you're supposed to read a chapter a day and then you, re, you find yourself, well, I'll read a little extra. So you read three chapters today. That means the next two days you don't have to read. Well, then you're tempted not to read because I don't have to read it. Well, I read three chapters that day. Well, I'm telling you, that 
it, the, it doesn't, it doesn't, um, that's not how it should work. In the, in the, the mana, if they collected more than you needed for any given day, except for the day before Sabbath, um, it went bad the next day. They couldn't eat it the next day. So this, this forced the Israelites to get their food daily. So they didn't get too much. So what I'm trying to say is, don't read ahead. Just because you, you can, I don't think you should. I mean, I don't want to be legalistic about it. My, my point is to just, just focus, you know, daily. Just daily refocus your time. That is what will build the habit. Um, this daily practice of being before God. And in every time you read, lift it up in prayer. And we were going to discuss that. Uh, if you are behind, you know, say you're more than six days ahead, more, more than six days, which can happen, don't feel the need to catch up all at once. So it kind of plays into it. Um, try reading two days at a time, or at least an extra chapter a day so that it's gradual. So you graduate, it's a, it's a marathon, right? It's not a sprint. Um, the purpose is to develop a daily reading habit. Um, and, and not to burn out. You don't want to burn out. I read too much yesterday. You know, just keep reading. Just keep reading. Because these these ideas, of anything that keeps you from daily reading, are all from the devil. All of them. God wants you to visit with him daily. Um, so don't read too far ahead. If, you know, if you know you're going to be extremely busy the next few days, there might be some merit to read a little bit ahead. I think that's that's fine. It, it just it might help. But don't read uh, so far ahead that um, you get out of the habit of daily reading. That's that's my point. Okay, so I killed that point. Um, to get the most out of reading the Bible this year and increase the odds of finishing, you may want to try the following. Okay, so this is above and beyond the practical steps for developing a habit. This is to maximize your reading habit. Read in a quiet play, place free from distractions. Um, that's ideal. Sometimes, you know, if you're in the DMV, the Department of Motor Vehicles in some states, um, you know you might be there 45 minutes, an hour. Um, you know, bring your Bible, so because you know you're going to have the time. But it might be difficult at first, <laughs> excuse me, to focus on what you're reading. Um, you can do it. If you, if you're, um, focused enough you can you can you can definitely read in a crowded area everything else kind of blurs out um, so don't think it's impossible don't think well this, there's too many distractions I can't read well at least try try and, and I'm telling you if, if God gives you the mind to read um, the diligence you'll be able to read in a crowded room and get a lot out of it as a matter of fact um, if you got so much on your mind if you're anxious and really upset about things um, even if you're in a room free of distractions, it might be very difficult to focus on your reading. As a matter of fact, I, I remember in the early days when I, when I started reading, I would find myself, um, you know, stressed out about so many things, and I couldn't even concentrate. I'd get like two or three verses, and I'd realize nothing I'm reading is going in. It's just not sinking in. It's, I'm getting no value. It's like I don't even know what I'm reading. And um, I had to pray. Sometimes I had to pray so much, and I, I sometimes I had to scream out and say, "God, I really want to focus here." And um, it took a little bit of prayer um, to really um, quiet my mind to become restful. It's not always easy if, if you live a crazy life like like I used to. Um, it, it can be very difficult to focus on reading the Word of God, and I, that's probably why a lot of people stop. That's probably why a lot of people just don't don't bother. I'm just saying work through that because because um, especially when you're coming from a place where you haven't been reading at all work through it just keep just keep reading just keep following the plan that's why plans are important at least once a week um, read the Bible without putting a time limit on your reading read the word as if to devour it um, I guess this might equate for as uh, for many as having a personal Bible study uh, for whatever day you're reading. Okay, so all I'm trying to say is, you know, your normal day of reading is, you know, thinking about what you're, you're reading. Always you want to try to comprehend um, the context of what you're reading and trying to get out of Scripture what you should be getting. And that's where you pray. You pray, you go to the Holy Spirit, and you pray. And we're going to 
that's the next uh, tip here. So it's kind of out of order, I guess. But um, at least one day out of the week, take some extra time to really study and consider you know all that the text has to offer analyze it you know get in there and say okay you know let's make sure you know what's going on and um, and whatever you conclude with you know whatever epiphanies you get or whatever um, you know you feel God is is talking to you through it because at that point it becomes very personal um, and it's that you know you might want to write it down you might want to uh, start a journal um, and you share it with your friend the, the, the person who's going to go through it or, or share with whoever. Maybe you want to share it with your pastor and that might encourage your pastor that you're reading because pastors want to know that their people are reading. As a, as a matter of fact, whatever you decide here as a result of this, as a result of um, seeking God, share with your pastor or whatever spiritual area you have and say, hey, um, I want to consider reading this plan and you know, I want your support and uh, go to your pastor and tell him or whatever spiritual leader you might have. Um, so pray before reading. If your mind is preoccupied, nothing will sink in. Pray that you are not distracted and that your heart is opened. And prayer works. So this is um, this is huge. This is absolutely huge. We we need to uh, pray prior to reading. God opened my heart. God softened my heart. Some days we feel so hardened, so callous, and um, and sometimes we just don't want to pray. And, and we don't want to read. So we say, Lord, I, I, I want to read. And I, I want a soft heart. I want to, um, I want to learn. Help me to um, be malleable so that you can um, teach me what I need to, to hear. So it's all about keeping a humble heart before God. Um, so pray. And I'm telling you, um, prayer opens our heart. Because God will hear those prayers, and He will give you a heart and a, and a mind for reading. Um, and then, as you read, consider what you're reading, and take it back to God. Uh, I'll give you a case in point. Two ideas I have. One is if you read about someone, say you read about Abraham, which is easy, and Abraham was given the task of taking his son to, I think it was Mount Moriah, and to um, to sacrifice his son. And we we can read that. We say, I don't know if I could ever do that. And I, I, I don't think I could ever do that. I, I know only if God <laughs> led me in that, only if God led me in that, maybe I could do it. Because Abraham, by this time, had already walked with God, you know, 25 years before he had the child, Isaac. And then I don't know, frankly, how old Isaac was. I, I, I think he might have been between 13 and 18. I, I'm not sure I've heard different people say different ages, but either way, it's 25 plus 18, so he was a good... He's been walking with God for a good 40 or some odd years, quite some time. So he's already exercised those faith muscles. He's seen God work in his life. He's seen so many miracles with God working in his life. And by the time God wanted him to sacrifice his son, he was ready. So when we read a story like that, it should inspire us. We should put ourselves on the scene and say, what if that was me? that God wanted me to do that. So that's why we can't read that in isolation. Um, we need to understand that God had been, or Abraham had been walking with God for over 40 years prior to, or you know, 35 to 45 years, I guess, prior to that point in his life. So think about that. So there's a couple things to pray for right there. You could say, Lord, I, I want to walk as Abraham walked. I want the faith that Abraham faith. Lord, lead me as you led Abraham. And there's, there's a great prayer from reading. So your reading should encourage the, your prayers. You can think about, you, you know, um, how can I even relate to Abraham? Um, and I think if you make the effort, then you'll get more out of your reading. Um, so that's just one example. And then another example is um, uh, Philippians 4, 6 through 7. 
um, don't worry about anything. Um, don't worry about everything. Isn't that crazy? Don't worry about everything, but pray about everything. <laughs> it's really hard not to worry about anything, first of all, and it's really hard to pray about everything. Because if you're not under practice, you just won't. I mean, people are used to worrying. Um, and then it's, it's, it's a hard thing to change, right? Um, so, um, and then, then it goes on to talk about the peace that you have that transcends all understanding. Um, if you go to God and, and, you at, and if you petition your Lord about your worries and your cares, then he'll give you the peace that transcends understanding. So that's Philippians 4, 6, and 7. You can read it. Um, it's on the screen, I'm sure. So um, anyway, when we read that, um, can you relate to that? Can you, rela can you actually relate to not worrying about anything? Can you relate to praying about everything? And then and secondly, can you relate about um, peace? The, that, that fruit of the Spirit about having the, the peace. And if you can't, then you take that to God. And you say, God, this this verse that I'm reading, I, I can't relate to. I don't get it. I have no peace. And I remember praying that prayer. And at the time, I was so stressed out. I was unbelievably anxious. I had so much worry going on. Um, so I read that scripture, and it, it just it, it, it caused me to go to God and say, Look, Lord, you promised this, and I don't see it in my life. So there was, a, there was a kind of a discrepancy there between my life and scripture. So anytime you see a discrepancy, anytime you don't see what is being promised, you take it to God, and you say, God, I, I don't get it. And you pray that enough, God will lead you. And God will help you to get there. And he wants us to go to Him. He wants us to be fully reliant on Him. Which is why this Bible reading is so important. So that we can see the chasm. There is a chasm between your life as a human and God's standard. Your life and the life of Jesus. We can't relate. We can't stand up. We, 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 can't, we can't even compare our walk with Jesus' walk, our standards with God's standards. His ways are so much higher, right? So all I'm saying is the more you read the Bible, it should cause you to reach out to him. Lord, I have no peace. Lord, I have no faith. Lord, I do vile things. I say mean things. I'm thoughtless. I'm not careful at all as I as I walk with you, and um, and so you have this you know you you develop this soft heart you develop this heart that wants to please him, because you're comparing it daily with him in Scripture. And all the Bible is um, instructive in that regard. Um, here's another tip: getting most out of your reading. Uh, keep a journal with you. As you read, if you have a question or have a re revelation, write it down. So you might want to get a small blank journal. They're not that expensive. Um, you can pay more for a good journal. That might be good if you want to value it. Um, so if you have a question or a revelation, write it down. You'll remember what you're reading more, and um, you can ask your questions. Uh, you can ask your questions online. You can submit a question to me. Send it to. I'm going to put an email on this screen. Um, or you can join us on the Bible Team Calls, and uh, a lot of times people have questions, and there is no dumb question. Absolutely not. Um, we all have questions. God, God wants us to be curious, um, and He wants us to be talking about these things. So definitely, um, and, that, and then, you know, when you write stuff, you just remember it more. So um, you make these observations in Scripture, it's good to write them down, because you retain more information. That's again why you know I talk about sermons not being that valuable. Well, sermons can be great and they can be valuable. The problem is, um, my understanding is our retention rate is lousy. When we walk out of a sermon, you know, like a few hours later, you'll forget most of what you heard. The next day, like, what did the preacher talk about? And you just don't retain it. And it's just it's kind of like the human condition, I think. So um, if we read and, you know, personally on our own time, 
and you make your own observations of scripture and you write it down and then you talk about it there's like uh, maybe a week period of time that you're meditating on this section of scripture and you discuss it with your friends you discuss it with your pastor maybe those that are spiritual leaders in your life and then um, and you remember it and you'll say this this is a lesson that Jesus taught me through these people it started out as an idea it started as a question and um, God taught me this concept, and it's in John 4, it's in John 6, or whatever um, scripture you're talking about. So keeping a journal with you and actually writing these things down will help in a long, in a long way um, um, retain. And um, as, you, you know, as you wrestle with the topics that the, that the scripture, because there's a lot to wrestle with in, in the scriptures. Um, wrestle with, I just mean grasp, understand, because there's some difficult things and things that we'll never have complete understanding. But it's always good to uh, be vocal about it and discuss it with others. And it's another thing you don't get out of a sermon. It's, it's a one-way communication. When you discuss it with others, then you know you have ideas bounce back. Well, I think this, I think that, you know, um, and, and always pray over it. Um, okay, so the last tip to get the most out of your reading, find a close friend, which we already talked about. Um, someone that wants to go down this journey with you. And um, I think that's very valuable. So um, that's it. That covers all our tips. Um, I'm hoping that, uh, and I'll pray that you got um, a lot out of this section. Um, and uh, if you want to join us for the Bible team calls, uh, that would be great. Monday nights. And if we get enough callers, maybe we'll start up another night. Um, if you have, if Monday night's a conflict and you want to... Um, uh, have us consider a different night of the week. Um, I, I'm open to that. I mean, Monday nights work nice for us. Um, 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern time. If you have a different time slot in mind, run it, run it by us. You know, maybe we'll consider uh, maybe a second call. I don't, I don't know. Um, but that's a, one idea. And then, um, so you can join us on, on the Bible team call, or you know, if you have a Bible reading buddy, you just you know, talk with them on a regular basis about your reading, and that'll be great. On the Bible team call, we got some people that have been reading the Bible for a very long time, and there's a wealth of uh, expertise and experience there. We have uh, a certain man; he's a pastor that's on there regularly, and um, and other and other people that have a lot of knowledge about Scripture. So, um, and then um, lastly, my invitation. My invitation to you is uh, to read along with us as we read. Um, the book of Genesis, um, starting in uh, January 1st. We're going to read through the Old Testament in a year. It's just the Old Testament in one year. Um, and I, uh, personally, I'm going to be reading some of the New Testament throughout the week. I, I'm following a different, um, it's with a specific church that I've just decided I'm going to read what they're reading for the New Testament. It's kind of uh, really a mixture of different places. So so my invitation is to read with us through the, the Old Testament. If you've never read the Old Testament before, I'm telling you there's some really good stuff in it. And um, um, I, I'm willing to spend time on a Bible reading, plan, Bible team calls to discuss um, what we've been reading. So if you want to join me in that, send me an email. Um, Bible reading plan or or o OT in one year, OT in one year. Put that on the on a, a subject of an email, and then I'll know you're going to join us, and I can pray for you as you decide to commit to that plan and um, find someone to to read along with you and join us on the Bible team calls, or just you know just decided to follow that, and then maybe every week I can uh, put up a video regarding that week's reading. I'm not sure how it's going to work out yet. But there's, there's my invitation to, to join us in that plan, o OT in one year. Um, so I think we've covered it. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we praise you for this time. We praise you for um, your word, that it's just a masterpiece. God and is organic. It is true food, as Jesus said in, in John 6. So, um, Lord, I, I want to uh, lift this uh, commitment up to you that you've put in our hearts to read your word. Um, help us to commit, help us to have uh, a determination, Lord, to, to continue to seek you, uh, regardless of what's happening in our lives, that we might continue to read your word, that we might continuously pray about what we're getting out of it, and uh, give us that one person in our lives that might want to read along with us, Lord. 
and um, be with us throughout this day. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. God bless you, my friend. Um, have a great night, and uh, see you next week. Bye.